Or maybe just a few more questions. Uh, yes, uh, right there. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yes. Well, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, we'll go to one and then the other. Okay. By the trend of all these Republicans who got elected to the House to help fix the economy and are now focusing on targeting programs benefiting women, programs benefiting health care, and the natural um, state budget problems here, Mass, which are also forcing us to education and services benefiting the poor and children. So I'm just wondering how we bring the focus both locally um, in terms of getting more people out volunteering and then nationally in terms of trying to take the focus away from cutting the few programs that exist that, that, that hold a lifeline for so many people. I, mean, I respect people who volunteer, I really do. And volunteers can play a good role in every area of our life, public life, but that's not the answer. The answer is we cannot decimate public services. There are communities in the state of Vermont where policemen are being laid off right and left. Fire departments are being decimated. There's a war against teachers when we desperately need good quality uh, teachers. Now, what, what am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be on a plane tomorrow, and this is the issue that we're going to deal with. Now, I believe that a $1.5 trillion deficit is serious business. But I think you can deal with that problem in a way that does not decimate, as you indicated, programs that low and moderate income people depend upon, A and B, which provide a whole lot of jobs. Okay? Now, how can you deal with the deficit in a way that does not slash programs that provide heating assistance to people in states like Vermont or Massachusetts, cut programs, for infant nutrition programs, for infants and children, et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you, okay? Number one, we repeal the tax breaks that have been given to the richest people in this country. Number two, number two, this year, the government is gonna lose about $100 billion of revenue because of tax havens that exist in the Cayman Islands and in Bermuda, where the wealthy and large corporations stash their money to avoid paying taxes. A hundred billion dollars a year. I'm on the Budget Committee. We have a picture of a four-story building in the Cayman Islands. That four-story building houses 18,000 American corporations. It's pretty crowded in there. Hard for these guys to work in a four-story building. What is that all about? It's obviously simply a postal address, a phony tactic in order to avoid paying taxes in the United States. This year, last year, last year, ExxonMobil made $19 billion in profit. For them, by the way, that was a bad year. It's true. Do you know how much money they paid in federal income tax? Zero. Worse. They got a $156 million tax rebate, General Electric rebate, Chevron rebate. Warren Buffett often makes the point that while the richest people have become richer, they're effective. And here's where you got to, when you listen to Fox, you got to be very careful. There's a nominal tax rate, that's what's on paper. There's an effective tax rate, what people really pay after all the loopholes and other crap that their accountants are able to help them with. The richest people today in America, the top 400 families, pay an effective income tax rate of 16%, which is probably less than many of you pay, okay? So how can we deal with the deficit in a sensible way? Well, you do away with the loopholes, you ask the wealthy to stop paying their fair share of taxes, you take a hard look at things like a very bloated military budget, okay? And it wouldn't hurt to bring a couple of wars to an end sooner than later.
And there are a lot of other ways there. It's not just the military, not just the military. So my point is, and we're going to fight this, we're going to present an alternative proposal. It probably won't be seen on NBC or CBS, but we will do our best to provide a contrast rather than going after those programs. Okay, gentlemen, oh, uh, no, we had another woman there, right. Sorry. Um, I guess they say this is quickly possible, like, you know, we live in a city that's been wrapped by violence this year, and my neighborhood, there was a lot of kids shot just on the other side of JP a few months ago, and in doing work around that, one of the things that was coming up a lot was getting people to look at the lack of civic and social resources in this country, and where pretty much in the world, in major cities all over the country. And where, how, how are we addressing the fact that it's to the benefit of the military to keep kids in this country in that state of violence and poverty so that they can have a poverty draft? I mean, like, where do we get to address here the hmm. military spending is out of control? You want to hear one of the ironies of that? That's not quite accurate. What happens is, during the midst of a recession, you're right, it's easier to attract people in the military. But the problem is so serious among young people that if you look at young people's criminal records, their lack of academic standards, what the military does is reject huge numbers of people who physically or mentally or emotionally can't get into the military. That's how bad it is. But to make the, the bottom line here is, that at a time when there are so many problems facing our country, I think we've got to end these wars as quickly as possible. I think you've got to take a hard look at the military budget, much of which is geared toward fighting the old Cold War rather than the military problems that we, we have to deal with today. All right, maybe last question. Uh, you got a, somebody back there? Okay. Um, one of the things I haven't heard you talk about Senator Sanders is the arts. The arts are something that can help us tell the stories that we need to tell, that can reach the people, and give them the correct information, can keep our hearts and our souls alive, and keep us doing the fight that we need to do right now. And I don't want the arts to get lost, and I, and I hope and assume that you're going to be fighting for the NDA, and the NH, and NDR, so that we have the resources that we need to keep our hearts and our minds and our souls alive and the willing and able to fight. The short answer is absolutely. I will. Of course I will. Now, your point is well taken. Uh, uh, the arts are enormously important and one of the sad things that we have seen in recent years is the decline in, in arts programs uh, in many of our schools. All right, let me just uh, conclude uh, the way I began, and, and that is to thank you all for coming out today. Uh, thank Chuck and everybody else who have organized uh, this event. I think I'm going to be heading to the back if any of you are interested uh, to sign some books. But look, uh, these are tough times for the country. Don't give up on this country. Don't give up on us. Uh, let's fight together, and I believe if we put our, if we put our minds to it and our shoulders to the wheel, we can, in fact, turn this country around. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I invite you to linger and talk to your neighbors. The senator will be down here uh, signing books. You can purchase the books from Porter Square Books back here.